have a call waiting. This is Ivan Locke. We have a situation here. You're the man in charge of the entire operation, but you've decided you ain't gonna be there. Hey, Dad, are you coming back? Sean, something's happened. I need you to hold it together for me. It will be a long night. Hey, everybody, what the flick? Ben Mankiewicz, Christy Lemire, Matt Achety, Alonzo Duralde. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is kind of the giant 800-pound uh, <laughs> <laughs> gorilla of the movies this the weekend. The but there's a terrific <laughs> indie in theaters that actually opened in some cities last week that uh, if it's not already showing near you, you should keep a lookout for it, and that would be Locke. Locke. Tom Hardy drives around in a car for an hour and a half in real time. And it's kind of awesome. Take a look. We are facing a hundred million dollars with our losses. Listen, I will take care of it. I'm trying to do the right thing. It's all going to hell. I will do what needs to be you done. You lost your mind. Stick to the plan. Are you still there, Ivan? Ivan? I love this movie. Oh my god. I love this movie. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. And it is, he's the only person on screen the entire time. Yeah. What happens is the callers call in. I don't know if you guys know how they made this. So they um, they only had a few nights to do it, right? Uh -huh. It's a $2 million budget, low budget. They put the cameras in the cars and they just drove for like five nights, like from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Yeah. every night straight. And the other, the other actors who play his wife, who play his, his mistress, who play the his kids, they're calling in from an actual conference room. Like he, <laughs> he's driving in the car, knows the call is coming, doesn't know who it's gonna be or when, and wow. then like has to pick up the moment with them. Oh, so, I'm amazed so by how they made this. So he didn't know what scene they were gonna shoot I believe when. not. I believe he just he's in the car and then a call comes in and he's gotta respond to it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> that, means, that means knowing everything cold the whole time, yeah. and it's just him. Or maybe he knew they were coming, but they, they actually are calling him. They're, right. in, they're right. on, in the on a phone with him. It's not like <laughs> it was done afterward with ADR. Or sure. Whatever. It's real. I, it, this movie, I, what I found so exciting about it is that more often than not lately, I find that movies have this failure of nerve, where they start out doing a, a, a one thing really well, but it's a small thing. A movie like Joe or, or Mud last year, where you get these really great characters, and you you get this fascinating world that they live in, and that should be enough to carry a movie. But no, you have to have this big third act plot story thing happening that feels really mooshed on to what up to that point felt like normal real life yeah. and, and interesting observable life. There's no mooshing on here. There's no mooshing on in this one. I remember about 20 minutes in, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if this entire movie were just him in the, on the right. phone in the car? And, and it was! Because I, <laughs> I didn't know going in what it was going to be about, and oh man, I just and it, it maintains that tightrope act because Tom Hardy is so incredibly good in this yes. movie. I mean, this is the movie I think that that cements him as one of the leading actors of our generation, no question. Yeah, I agree. What's interesting too about it is you look at the movies he made his name on, mm -hmm. right? They require this ferocious physicality, whether sure. it's Bronson, whether it's Dark Knight Rises, even, even Inception, Warrior, of course. And here, he's sitting the whole time. Oh, yeah. He has to do it. He's doing this this Welsh accent, which was his idea ah, okay. to do the Welsh accent. Yeah, the accent and is very, it's, yeah. it's clearly, it's very noticeable. Yeah, yeah. cause it, it's, it's hypnotic, the pacing of it and just the soothing it's, nature it's of it. It's basically a radio play that <laughs> this movie is yeah. with some visuals, but God, he's so magnetic and so compelling. And Stephen Knight, who wrote and directed, he he wrote Dirty Pretty Things yes. and- um, Eastern Prime. Promises. Eastern Promises. Mm -hmm. It's you, know, you learn so much about this yes. guy as the conversations proceed. His own sort of occasional, you know, monologues to his father, who's not there. That's the one thing I didn't um, like. I, that, <laughs> that seems dodgy on paper, but it, it ultimately worked uh, for me. But but just it wasn't, in, there wasn't that much of it either, and it was always interrupted by a phone call. It felt yeah. like a device to me, and I know it was an in intention to flesh out his motivation for making the choices he makes on this night, but mm -hmm. it just felt like. A device. It wasn't my little, favorite. Little it wasn't my favorite part in it, but I, 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 it wasn't that significant. Mm -hmm. It didn't take me out of it. It okay. didn't take me out of it, and it only. I think it happened three times. It was brief, right. um, and like considering that this is a night we didn't explain really what is happening in his right. life. There's a zillion. Everything is going wrong. Or right, depending on how you want to look at it. Mostly wrong. Uh, he, in his night. He's, he's, he's leaving two big things he's behind right. him. He's leaving two big things behind him and to deal with a thing that he feels like he has to deal with. And and it's the kind of night where you might talk to your mother or father. Mm -hmm. Like it was big enough and he's sitting there by himself mm -hmm. waiting for people to call him back to solve, to try and and you mentioned to try and solve all these big things, and you mentioned his accent, but then you started to talk about his way of speaking, because they're, they're different. He does the Welsh right. accent, but then he has this very specific, mannered way of talking. Precision. This is a, this is a guy who has been 
incredibly precise right. and reliable because and of his that. precision, right, yeah. known for it yeah. all his uh -huh. life. And so some of these conversations are like, how could you be in this situation? Yeah. You're you, you <laughs> never do things like this. And he still maintains that he's like, right. no, I will, I will solve all of these problems right. yeah. on the phone from my car in this manner. It's so tense, even though it, there is that smoothness to him. Every time the phone rang, I was just totally edgy, like, oh my yeah. God, is it going to be his house? Is it going to be his kid? <laughs> is it going to be his boss? Who's going to call him now? So I, I was just blown away by it. It's, um, it's short, but it's still gripping the whole time. And it's one of those movies that really, you know, uh, I love movies about people who are good at their jobs. <laughs> and, and, me too. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that take you into the very specific minutia of things. So like this, I learned a lot about concrete. I, I knew nothing about concrete in pouring, room. and he now says, I know. He says a, a lot. couple times when, when to, to motivate people to do things for him, or why he's doing, why explaining his own motivation to his to his boss, that he's not doing it for any, he's doing it for the concrete. <laughs> yeah. He's doing it for the air, for, my building. for the air, for the oxygen it will take up, for the shadow that it will cast. It's right. very it was, poetic yeah. the way he describes the skyscraper. I'm sorry, I'm over here doing Bane. <laughs> uh, and I love Tom Hardy, and he, you know, he's like sort of he's like walking sort of sexuality, mm -hmm. and he, uh, and it's not there in this movie uh, deliberately. This is not a guy who like women that throw themselves uh, at the character he plays, but he can't help it. Like it still, <laughs> it still seeps through. Right. Uh, he's a he's a badass man. So go ahead. He's a, no, he's been one of my favorite actors for a long time, and yeah. uh, and he maintains it. So I gave it a uh, I gave it a nine point seven. 9.9. .9. I'm saying 9.2. I love it so much too, but the thing with the dad didn't work for me. So. Uh, but anyway, that's a 9.6. Mm -hmm. And it's 90% on the tomato meter. Certified fresh. Go oh, find so it. Go find it in your I town. I can't imagine someone who loves movies not liking this movie. You could like it less than we did, but I can't imagine somebody. Yeah. What Hating. the fuck? There's no fuck's wrong with people. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.